Hey team, welcome to our first official screencast that will cover actual historical content. I know it's been seven weeks, it's going to be tough to like actually start doing world history, but we got to do it. It's a world history class. So today we're going to be talking about the Enlightenment thinkers, and before we start actually talking about them, I want to tell you the goal for the screencast. And with each screencast, I'm going to give you a goal so you know kind of the big ideas that you should be focusing on learning while we're going through the screencast. So your goal today is by the end of this screencast, you should be able to confidently say, I can identify major Enlightenment thinkers as well as the idea or ideas associated with each thinker. We're going to be talking about four different thinkers today and seven ideas in total. So the context for this is the Enlightenment, which was in Europe uh, between about 1600 and 1800. And during this time period, thinkers of various kinds um, use science and they use logic and reason to try to improve society, to try to get people more rights, to try to get rid of things like hunger and crime in society. They, they, they used reason to try to make things better. So during the Enlightenment, there are a whole bunch of people with that weren't very happy with society. They weren't thrilled with how society was being run, with the kings having absolute control over everybody um, and, and the ordinary people not having any rights. And thinkers were what we're going to call social critics, um, and they suggested new ways of organizing society. And social criticism is just a statement that disagrees with the conditions that are present in a society. So if somebody were to stand up and say, in America things are bad because too many people don't have jobs, that is a social criticism of life in America. These thinkers that we're talking about today are all social critics. The first one we're going to talk about is this guy on the left side here, John Locke. Uh, and you'll check out, I even found this image on Creative Commons and cited it properly. You're welcome. Uh, John Locke was an English philosopher. He lived in the late 17th century. And um, there were two main ideas associated with John Locke. The first idea is this idea of natural rights. The second idea is the idea that there is a right to revolt against a, an unjust government. So the, the idea of natural rights is just that people are born with rights that should never, ever be taken away. You're born with this right, and no government ever has the, the ability to take that away from you. And according to John Locke, these were life, liberty, and property. His right to revolution stated that uh, a government's job is to protect your natural rights, your right to life, your right to liberty, your right to property. And if the government doesn't protect those rights, people, will have, people have the right to revolt against that government. In order for this to happen, there needed to be a long train of abuses, which we'll talk about later in the unit uh, when we write our humanities paper about the Odyssey. Locke's social criticism is that leaders aren't respecting the rights of their citizens and uh, bad governments are being allowed to stay in power because people aren't revolting. The next guy we're going to talk about is this dude, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. And he was a Swiss philosopher in the middle of the 18th century. Two big ideas from him, the idea of general will and the idea of the social contract. Rousseau's idea is the general will is just essentially majority rules. Whatever the majority of society wants, that needs to be the will of society. Also, people should follow the will of society, the opinions of the whole, whether they agree with those opinions or not. The second idea of Rousseau's is the social contract, and this is uh, a contract that people enter into with each other and with the government. And what it says is people will give up some rights in order to protect their most important rights. So I give up my absolute right of freedom of speech. I can't walk into a crowded theater and scream fire. But in return for giving up some rights, the government will provide me with some basic protections and some basic safeties that will help protect my, maybe, I don't know, Locke's natural rights. Rousseau as a social critic deals with the idea that people's ideas aren't being followed, that the kings were ruling without the, the help of anybody around them, and also that the most important rights of society weren't being protected, that some of the natural rights that Locke wrote about were being violated routinely by the kings and absolute rulers that were in power in this time period. Next up, we've got this guy, Montesquieu. He was French, again, middle of the 18th century, uh, and he talked about the separation of powers. And this just meant that power should be separated into, five, or into different branches, so nobody in the government had all the authority. And his idea um, is seen in the U.S. government, where we have our three branches, the judicial, the legislative, and the executive branches. And Montesquieu, as a social critic, dealt with the idea that just no one person should have all the power. The power should be shared between multiple people. Next up, we've got Voltaire, uh, also French, and he was also from the middle of the 18th century. He, his ideas were freedom of speech and freedom of religion, just that the government's 
in power shouldn't be able to restrict what people can say or what religion they practice. And Voltaire's uh, big force as a social critic is just that kings shouldn't be able to control what their people say or who their people decide to worship. The final one we're going to talk about is this guy, Cesar Beccaria. He was an Italian philosopher, also middle of the 18th century. And Beccaria was all about uh, no torture. He felt like people shouldn't be tortured regardless of the crime they commit, that everybody had a right to a, a fair punishment that wasn't barbaric. And that was his social criticism, was that barbaric punishments should no longer be used when people commit crimes. All right. Thank you for watching. That's all we've got for our screencast on the Enlightenment thinkers. Uh, please go back, check your notes, and figure out, can you say that you can identify all five of our major Enlightenment thinkers and the seven ideas that go with them? Thanks.